Welcome back to our devotional today. It's a blessing for, to have you with us. And uh, glad that you logged in today. Hope this devotional is a blessing to you. And uh, thank you for those who listen. And uh, for those who share the devotionals each day. And uh, also by times for the encouraging words and uh, messages that we get from our listeners. And uh, we're certainly grateful that God has enabled us to do this and put this on our hearts. We're in the middle of Mark chapter 5, and as we've been studying Mark 5, in the last half of the chapter, um, we've seen that there is a man by the name of Jairus who comes to Jesus with a daughter that is sick, of 12 years old. She's at home. And he beseeches Jesus to come and to heal her and to help her. And while they're on their way, we saw yesterday that there was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years, and she comes, and uh, she touches the garment of Jesus in faith and in touching that garment in faith she is uh, made whole and Jesus turns and he addresses her to ensure that she has not only been made whole as far as the body is concerned but she's been made whole in the spirit and the soul as well that she's been saved and now as we come uh, into this passage today and tomorrow Jesus continues to go toward the home of Jairus and gets to the home of Jairus and there's some news that comes out today. There is some devastating news regarding the daughter of Jairus as they travel that comes to them. Notice what it says in Mark 5 and verse 35. It says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth a tumult, and them that wept, and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. So as we come into these verses, we find here some very devastating news in this passage. Uh, Jesus and Jairus are traveling towards the home of Jairus, and as they're traveling, a uh, servant comes with the news of her death. And not only does he come with the news of her death, but uh, he comes with a very definite plea uh, to give up any hope whatsoever that she would be healed. And you can imagine how devastating and how crushing uh, this news would have been to Jairus as he was traveling and hopeful that Jesus was going to get there in time and heal her. And now, as uh, this servant comes, he, in essence, tells Jairus, it's too late, don't bother Jesus. Excuse me, your daughter has already died. And then, in verse 36, Jesus does a couple of things. He, he first of all, encourages faith in this man, and he encourages him to, to have faith in God, regardless of how difficult the circumstances may be that he is looking at, and not only does he encourage him to have faith, but he also quiets this man's fears. Listen to what it says in uh, verse 36. As soon as he, it says, As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And uh, so he encourages him to be not afraid, but rather to only believe. And, and we're going to see in just a few moments this simple truth that uh, fear and faith cannot live together. And that when we are fearful, it is because our faith is lacking or our faith is waning in God. And when we have that faith in Him, He enables us to face even the difficult circumstances of life and to do so without fear because we can trust Him knowing that He knows truly what is best and that He is in control. Friends, I'm reminded of some verses as I think about this whole idea of, uh, of coming before God. I'm reminded of uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and in verse 16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So there we are reminded that when we have that time of need, when, we're in, when we are in need of mercy, that we are to come boldly before the throne of grace. And uh, that we understand that that is where our help comes from. That is where our hope comes from. In Psalm 37, in verse 5, it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So there we have that exhortation. 
that regardless of what we go through in life, that we need to commit our ways to the Lord, that we need to trust in Him, that we need to believe in Him, and understand that He is able to bring it to pass, that He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Then in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So there we're reminded of the importance, once again, of making sure that our trust is in the Lord. Now as we come back to Matthew chapter, or yeah, Mark chapter 5, we see here in verse 38 that Jesus arrives at the house of Jairus and that he is greeted with a pitiful scene of weeping and of wailing as he gets there. Notice what it says in verse 38. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. So Jesus comes into this house. There's a bunch of weeping and wailing around. There's, there's crying. There's mourning and rightfully so. And then Jesus makes a rather startling statement in verse 39. He walks in, and he says, And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Jesus could say that because Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. You know, this girl was dead as far as the people were concerned, but to Jesus, he was only sleeping. You know, a number of times in the in the Word of God, we see that that uh, death is referred to as sleeping, especially for the child of God. In John chapter 11, as Jesus talks to his disciples about Lazarus and the condition that Lazarus is in, um, he says to the disciples that Lazarus sleep, and they say, Lord, if he sleeps, he does well. Let's let him rest. Let's get him to sleep. But he needs again. Jesus comes out very clearly and says, Lazarus is dead. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So there, once again, he, he uses the analogy of sleeping, uh, referring to those who have passed. Then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and in verse 13, Paul is writing to the Thessalonian believers, and he says, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Yes, friends, as, a, as believers we sorrow, but we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. You see, in death, the spirit leaves the body, and if a person is a Christian, the soul and spirit go to be with God. In Philippians chapter 1, and in verse 21, Paul says this, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Paul says there, for, for the Christian to, to die and to be with Christ is far better because we are at home with him and truly this world is not our home as a child of God. And friends, we need to realize that ultimately that, that Christians need to realize that death is only for a little while and uh, that one day the glorious resurrection is going to happen. Let me read these verses for you. I've already read verse 13 of First Thessalonians chapter 4 where it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He did not say there that as a Christian, when we lose a loved one, that we sorrow not. But he does say that we sorrow not as those who have no hope. We understand the hope of the resurrection. We understand the hope of heaven. We understand the hope that Jesus Christ brings. And that hope brings us help and comfort in the midst of our sorrow. He says in verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dig in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Friends, he's reminding us here of this simple truth that death is not forever for the child of God. That death is not forever for anybody. We need to understand that every single person is going to live forever, and whether or not we've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our eternal Savior is going to determine our eternal destiny. For the child of God who is not a Christian because they are good, but because they've placed a simple trust in a great God. They've repented of their sin and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation. Heaven is their eternal home. 
For the one who has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and what Jesus did upon the cross, the Bible makes it very clear that the lake of fire is their eternal home. And friends, as a child of God, for those of you who are listening today that know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, we need to be reminded that death is not forever, that Christ has taken the stinger out of death, and that it simply puts us into the presence of the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Friend, if you're listening today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let me encourage you, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is a day of salvation. Repent of your sin. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone to be your Savior. <laughs>